Today on Legally Us, Janelle splits from Cody Brown. So what is she entitled to? Plus, celebrities named in a class action lawsuit. Bronwyn Wyndham Burke demands money. And Lenny and Lisa Hochstein's divorce gets even uglier. We've got that plus so much more on today's Legally Us. Everyone, welcome to Legally Us. I'm Christina, and that's, of course, Nima Romani, president of West Coast Trial Lawyers and former federal prosecutor. Hi, Nima. How are you? Hi, Christina. I'm great. How's it going? Good, good. Lots to get to today. And this is um, an interesting topic. We haven't touched on this yet. So Janelle Brown and Cody Brown from Sister Wives. So they reveal that they have sep- have been separated for months. Janelle and Cody met back in 1989 and they spiritually wed four years later. So he was already at the time legally married to his first wife, Mary. So the polygamist continued to expand his family through spiritual unions with Christine Brown in 1994 and Robin in, Robin in 2010. So in order to legally marry Robin and adopt her three children from a previous marriage. He legally divorced Mary in 2014, but they stayed together as a couple. A few months, actually a year ago, Christine Brown announced uh, her split from Cody after 27 years of quote unquote marriage. So we haven't really touched polygamy yet, but here we are. So since, since Christine and Janelle were not legally married to Cody, but spiritually married to him, are they entitled to anything? How do they kind of divvy up assets? Yeah, Christina, spiritual marriages mean nothing under the law. You have to be legally married. And in every state in the country, including Utah, polygamy is unlawful. You can only have one husband or one wife in the United States. doesn't matter your religion. doesn't matter what state you're in. So these types of spiritual unions don't mean anything. So they don't have any of the same rights that a real wife would have. Interesting. So um, Janelle's kids, they're all above legal age, but Christine has two children that are still minors. So can she ask for child support in that case? And, you know, I guess she can't ask for spousal support since they weren't legally married. That's right. So she won't get spousal support, but she can get child support just like anyone could regardless of marriage. So child support is for the child and obviously spousal support or alimony is for the wife Mm -hmm. or the husband. So in this particular case, Janelle will be able to get some money for the kids, but she won't be able to get anything for herself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, considering polygamy is illegal in, you know, all states, including Utah, how come they aren't you know, being prosecuted for this since, you know, they live their life publicly and have a TV show about this. So how come they're not in trouble? Yeah. So, I mean, Sister Wives has put the spotlight on polygamy in this country, obviously sort of a very fringe uh, type of practice. Not a lot of people do it, but my understanding there is an investigation, but to the extent that there's a spiritual union, which means nothing, there's not much law enforcement or prosecutors can do because someone really isn't technically legally married to more than one person. Got it. So yeah, they would have to go through if I guess if they had multiple marriage licenses and things like that, then they would be um, in some trouble. So it seems like even though, it, you know, it's, you know, the, even though they had this relationship for, you know, almost three decades, it really doesn't mean anything in the court of the law. It doesn't. It's mm-hmm. no different from someone having, you know, a, a wife and a mistress mm-hmm. or, you know, a husband and a boyfriend, as long as you're not legally married to two different people at the same time, you're good. You're good. All right. Well, moving on to this class action lawsuit that contends that stakeholders in Yuga Labs, which is the parent company of the NFT series board Ape Yacht Club and its affiliated digital products engaged in conspiracy with celebrities to defraud potential investors. So the complaint was filed on December 8th in federal district court in L.A. And Yuga partners named 37 defendants who include Kevin Hart, Gwyneth Paltrow, Madonna, Justin Bieber, Serena Williams, Jimmy Fallon. Paris Hilton, Snoop Dogg, The Weeknd, list goes on and on and on. It's pretty extensive. So they said that they encouraged their followers to buy Board Ape Yacht Club non-fungible tokens, which turned out to be fraudulent. Now, this lawsuit says that the famous personalities promoted this, um, and they eventually led buyers to acquire losing investments at drastically inflated prices. So the two plaintiffs who filed the complaint are seeking at least $5 million for themselves, as well as other people who were affected. The document states that most of the celebrities involved were allegedly recruited by talent manager Guy Oseri, who's a pretty big uh, talent manager out in Hollywood. So why are they going after the celebrities and not entirely the Yuga Labs companies that kind of uh, created this? 
Yeah, Christina, we're seeing a lot of these types of lawsuits. Now that the bottom has come out of both the NFT and the crypto market, we saw this with FTX, and now we're seeing it with um, Yuga Lab. So when you're a plaintiff and you want to sue because you're alleging some sort of fraud or misrepresentation or deception, you want to name everyone, right? Because as we saw with FTX and Sam Bankman fried these companies are going bankrupt. So there might not be an ability to collect. So what you want to do is go after those deep pockets. So the company goes under, maybe there's a celebrity that you can collect from if you win. Now, the celebrities do things right, and in these types of endorsement deals, they'll want some sort of indemnification provision because they don't really know what's going on behind the scenes of the company, right? They're just hired to promote um, a good or a service. So what you'll want to do if you have good lawyers, if you're you know, Jimmy Fallon or Snoop Dogg, whatever A-list celebrity you are, say, listen, I'm going to promote your product. I'm going to rep it. But if anything goes sideways and I get sued, you need to defend me. You need to pay me company because I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, it kind of reminds me a little bit of when Fire Festival happened and it kind of changed the way that celebrities promote things when they had to use, you know, hashtag ad after everything like that. And, you know, it kind of reminded me a little bit of that. But will celebrities have to pay up since they were affiliated with this? I guess it depends on, like you said, what's in their contract, what's in the clause. Yeah, it depends if they can actually prove the fraud. I mean, look, when you're dealing with like cryptocurrency, or NFTs, these really aren't regulated and they're very risky uh, to assets and investment. So, you know, it's really sort of buyer beware. Now, if there's an actual misrepresentation or a fraud, that's one thing. But if it's just the market went out and, you know, mm -hmm. people don't value these things and, you know, they were inflated, that's a very different story. So it's going to depend on what was said, whether it was truthful or not. But if people just lost a lot of money because of it's a bad investment, that's not a good case. But you're right. Celebrities, you got to be more careful. I mean, people have been making a lot of money. If you can make a million dollars from just a single, you know, social media post, you know, people will just want a quick buck if you're on the celebrity side. But you got to be careful because nothing comes for free. And then people may try to come after you. Uh, if anything goes sideways. Yeah. Is this a reminiscent or similar to what happened to Kim Kardashian after she agreed to pay for the crypto ad? I think she had to pay over a million dollars. So will a lot of people just kind of pay this off to just kind of get it off their their plates? Or is this does this show any similarities to that? Christina, is similar, but slightly different. In that case, the SEC, it was a government entity that said, you have violated federal security laws by not disclosing, you know, your relationship and the ad and giving the proper disclaimer. So, you know, in that case, Kim K actually violated federal securities law. It was clear it was a violation and she paid to move on because that was going to be a loser case for her. In this particular case, it's a little bit different, a little bit more of a gray area. It's unclear whether, um, you know, Yuga Labs said something that was fraudulent or not. And if so, what role, if anything, the celebrities had to play in all that. So we'll see. Um, it's going to be here in L.A. in federal court. Similar cases like this against involving crypto companies like FDX have been dismissed. So I'm sure they're going to try to do the same thing here. Yeah. And last question about this, because they said that a lot of these celebrities were allegedly recruited by talent manager Guy Osari. Can the celebrities turn around and blame the talent manager for booking them to this? And then, you know, a lot of this, a lot of these penalties may have to fall on him. Yeah, we've seen this, you know, whenever you have multiple defendants, we saw this, um, you know, with a concert case where a lot of people were, were trampled, you know, there's been a lot of finger pointing between defendants or the rust shooting, right? Everyone's trying to shift the blame to someone else, because if there was a fraud committed and if people lost money, well, well the celebs are going to say, listen, it wasn't me that made this fraudulent statement. I didn't know about this. Here's someone who's more culpable. Here's someone who's more liable. If I'm any responsibility, it's just going to be a small percentage, and therefore I only have to pay for a small percentage of the damages. So I expect to see that same finger pointing amongst the defendants in a case like this. Yeah, going to get messy. All right, speaking of messy, let's move on to two housewives that are going through some pretty high profile and um, highly publicized divorces. So kicking it off with Bronwyn Wyndham Burke. So this happened two months after she filed for divorce, and she's asking for some financial assistance. According to court documents, uh, she is unable to provide for herself or her seven kids. 
because her husband allegedly stopped providing any support. She said, I have relied on Sean to make all financial decisions for 23 years, and I have effectively been kept in the dark regarding the true extent of our business interests and assets. She said that she has less than $3,000 in her accounts, and she wrote, I am unemployed except for the two years during our nearly 23-year marriage. I have stayed home to care for our seven children. We traveled the children to Europe, Miami, Puerto Rico, New York, and many other island vacations. We would dine out weekly at restaurants such as Mastro's, Javier's, and marmalade where our average check exceeded $500. We had two nannies, full-time housekeeper, private trainer, a stylist who would come to her house monthly, hair and makeup, you know, luxury, bu- a luxury budget. And uh, she bought handbags. So she is seeking $10,000 per month for spousal, spousal support, saying he makes $65,000 per month. Um, page six report, reported that he agreed to pay spousal support, but is asking the court uh, to reserve for future determination the issue of support payable to him as well. You know, they're, they released a say, statement saying that they're not trying to get messy, but it seems like it kind of is. So it's he obligated to keep up this lifestyle that she had, um, you know, the uh, the the two nannies, the private trainers, things like that. Is he obligated now that they are not together to keep up that type of lifestyle for her? Yeah, Christina, these divorces often do get messy, and we see it mm-hmm. every week here on Legally Us. So, you know, in this particular case, Brom is, an, is actually right. I mean, generally speaking, when uh, there's a separation, the spouse that is the one who's making the money, especially if there's one who's employed and is one not, you got to maintain that pre-divorce lifestyle. And that, that's why she's talking about what they were accustomed to, the traveling, the dining out, the, the bags, the clothes, the stylist, hair and makeup. So that's all relevant to what is an appropriate spousal support award here in California. So she's actually right. Got it. Interesting. So five out of her seven kids are minors. Will that play a factor into the amount of money that she gets per month to keep up this, the lifestyle that she had? Of course, because she, now she's going to get child support and a lot of it for five minor kids on yeah. top of that spousal support award. So I expect a pretty big payout for her on a monthly basis based on her previous lifestyle, as well as having five minor kids. Yeah. So what does it mean when he says reserve for future determination, the issue of support payable to? So does that mean like if she gets a job later, then the um, the monthly payments can be reduced? Exactly. Sean's hoping for some sort of offset, right? I mean, in an ideal world, you know, your ex remarries and the spousal support stops. But if not, you know, you want her to get a job and that way your spousal support payments are reduced by her income. And in some cases, you know, the ex may even get a higher paying job, in which case the spousal support could go the other way. So he just wants to reserve that right in case she does get a job at some point in the future. Yeah, I'm sure he's hoping that housewives come and come to knocking again. So we'll yeah. see. Um, I'm moving on to another uh, messy split that we've talked about before. So Lenny Hochstein is accusing his estranged wife, Lisa, of buying $10,000 worth of designer items in one month, despite claiming he cut her off, cut off her American Express card. So according to new documents, uh, he said that they agreed to have a limit on her Amex card, which Lenny covers, and that was reduced to $5,000 per month as of November 2022, after she incurred $200,000 worth of charges in a five-month span. Girls know how to spend. Uh, Despite her agreeing to the limit, he claims that she snuck in some last-minute big-ticket items just days before the limit went into effect. Um, She said that He said that she brazenly spent more than uh, $2,000 on a Louis Vuitton purse, $3,000 at Bergdorf Goodman, and on a high fashion purse and dropped an additional $3,500 on clothes. It appears that they came to a deal um, that, and she returned the bag and uh, in exchange for $4,300 in cash. And he wrote her two checks for $2,500. But is it, um, I mean, I find it kind of funny that she just went over this limit right before it um, went into effect, but is, can he take any other legal action for maxing out his credit card? Yeah, I mean, he certainly can. And this is, again, one of those other nasty divorces that we're seeing. You know, they had a prenup. Uh, Lisa's tried to litigate the prenup. And according to Lenny, at least, she's gotten more than the prenup. So it sounds like, at least according to his side, he's overpaying. But what he's trying to do is come to some sort of resolution because it's really going to spill out in the public, not just in terms of the money, in terms of other folks that they're dating. And it just become a mess. So, you know, if I were Lenny... I would try to come to some sort of resolution so 
not every week or every month we're hearing about Lisa's spending or Lisa's new boyfriends in the press. Yeah. So what does it mean to exactly litigate a prenup? Was she just trying to change it since he, um, you know, he was unfaithful to her? So it depends on the state. Certain states like California, for instance, it doesn't matter whether you cheat or not. You can't punish someone. Um, But, you know, what you want to do if you want to litigate a prenup, and it's tough, um, you want to say that, you know, I didn't uh, properly consult with an attorney. Um, This is something that's unconscionable. It's unfair. A judge should revise it or a judge should rescind it entirely. So that's often what people do when they want to get more than the prenup called for is sort of go back in time and try to convince the judge that at the time it was unfair when I entered into it. It's not easy, but if there's a lot of money at stake, sometimes it's worth uh, a shot to try to see if you can get a judge to toss that prenup. Yeah. Do you think that Lisa has a chance in that, even though it seems like she's uh, making out better than the prenup actually stated? Yeah, I think she has a chance. And sometimes you do it not just to actually try to get it tossed, but to gain leverage over your ex, right? We saw this recently with like Dr. Dre's ex-wife. I mean, he's worth more than a billion dollars. There was a prenup there. So um, the ex litigated it, not necessarily because she probably thought that she's going to get a court to tear up this prenup, But even if there's a 5% chance, Dr. Dre may be, wow, there might be a 5% chance I lose millions, tens, or even hundreds of millions of dollars. Let me pay a little bit extra money to kind of settle this, wrap this up, and make it go away. Yeah, seriously. Well, it seems like that's what Lenny wants to do. Um, All right. Well, Nima, thank you so much for your expertise and insight, as always. Christina, thanks for having me, as always. See you next week. See you next week. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.